protocol, the uh, XR, the Ripple protocol. It's the, it's the technology and the protocols make it work. The people who really understand what's going on with digital currencies understand that putting these protocols in place, the blockchain protocol, the Ethereum protocol, the uh, XR, the Ripple protocol, the uh, XR, the Ripple protocol, the uh, XR, the Ripple protocol, and then enabling those protocols to cause transactions to occur. Uh, and then those and those transactions can be defined very broadly as not just moving same things of value, but anything that's got an information content uh, is extraordinarily transformative. The focus on the value of the token is distracting. It's the technically transformative. The focus on the value of the token is distracting. The value of the token. The focus on the value of the token is distracting. It's the technology and the protocols make it work. The people who really understand. I got a super deep dive today, guys, as far as the truth about the XRP case. I believe, and I'm going to show you guys the connection between Brad Garlinghouse, Glenn Hutchins, who just spoke, Jay Clayton, Donald Trump, and this was plans within plans to get legal clarity for XRP. I will show you guys what I mean. So it starts with Glenn Hutchins. Glenn Hutchins is a billionaire businessman, investor in XRP. Hutchins serves on the board of the NASDAQ. You may not know that, and you may know that. Hutchins also sat on the board of the Fed Reserve in the Bank of New York, what makes that significant, owner of the Boston Celtics, vice chairman of the Brookings Institute, and the co-founder, what we're going to focus on for this video, is the co-founder of Silver Lake. People who really understand what's going on with digital currencies understand that putting these protocols in place, the blockchain protocol, the Ethereum protocol, the uh, XR, the Ripple protocol, the uh, XR, the Ripple protocol. Glenn Hutchins knows, and I'm going to show you guys what I mean. We're going to go deep down the rabbit hole. Growing House was most recently an advisor to Silver Lake. This is Glenn Hutchins, co-founder of Silver Lake. Silver Lake founder Glenn Hutchins, bullish on XRP. You just said he said XRP right there. Former Ye Yahoo exec, Brad Garlinghouse. I can bring that up. I was actually working on like the longest thread feed in Twitter history and putting all this on one thread. Also, hollow models at work. So I'm up like super late on this video. I'm probably going to put it up right after I finish it. And this may take place with the morning stream. Former Yahoo exec Brad Garlinghouse joins AOL. Now, this is from 2009, but what makes this significant is Garlinghouse was most recently an advisor to Silver Lake Partners. Brad Garlinghouse, advisor to Glenn Hutchins. Prior to that, he spent six years at Yahoo in executive roles. AOL and the new management with the spinoff IPO on the horizon continues to fill its executive ranks. Brad Garlinghouse is the top. Former Yahoo exec will join AOL as the president of Internet and Mobile Communications. That's pretty interesting right there. It's also interesting what Glenn Hutchins has to say about Bitcoin. Bitcoin could flop like VHS competitor, tech investor Glenn Hutchins, which he says it could be replaced by the revival XRP. Bitcoin could be pushed out by other cryptocurrencies, similar to how analog video format Betamax was squashed by rival VHS. According to tech investor Glenn Hutchins, Bitcoin could turn out to be Betamax, Hutchins says. Of Wednesday, Bitcoin still had 36% of the global market share among cryptocurrencies. As cryptocurrency market matures, Bitcoin could be pushed out by competitors the same way the video cassette tape from Betamax lost out to rival VHS as home entertainment technology evolved during the 1980s. Hutchins, who's also a director at AT&T, said it's likely that at least one digital currency ultimately prevails. In this case, the VHS or winner could be a Bitcoin alternative like XRP. Ethereum or Litecoin. We'll throw that out there. Now, a little bit about Glenn Hutchins' career, guys. You're going to be impressed. Glenn Hutchins, billionaire businessman. <laughs> Pickle over there sleeping. After studying at Lawrence School, Hutchins earned his A.B. from Harvard. Hutchins co-founder Silver Lake Partners, where I just showed you Brad Garlinghouse was an advisor. So that's going to right there. That's going to collect connect Brad Garlinghouse 
to Glenn Hutchins. Now the idea is to connect Glenn Hutchins to Jay Clayton. Jay Clayton, former attorney, former SEC chair, right there. I didn't put that video up. I had to put the video up of Jay Clayton. And I know I put it up. Let me show it to you. I'm just maybe out of order here. Uh, the Jay Clayton brag on here it is. To drive prices down, like we talked about in um, security trading. So this is Glenn Hutchins right here. I just showed you who's bullish on XRP, and here's Jay Clayton. They've done shows together. Are you telling me they didn't discuss the game plan at this moment for Ripple and XRP? Because we know Glenn Hutchins is super bullish on XRP, and it looks like him and Jay are really good friends here. To drive prices down, like we talked about in um, security trading. But in payments, they've gone up because you Apple Pay adds a quarter, Stripe adds a quarter of a point, uh, Square adds a adds a, maybe even a point more. So payments go from two percent to two point two and a quarter to two point seven five. That's actually ripping off the consumer mm. and making financial inclusion harder to accomplish rather than easier. Wow! Uh, and if you actually thought about the broader purpose of this kind of organization like this, okay, you ought to actually be out there facilitating the introduction of technologies to take these prices down to increase co consumer uh, fairness and, and, and expand financial inclusion. Yeah. So I'd think about it that way. No, I think, and, and to be clear, I'll give, you, I'll give my usual disclaimer um, that my views are my own, and I'll also say I'm not gonna pass views on any particular company. You guys are welcome to. Uh, <laughs> drive price. He said he's not gonna pass views on any particular company, but you guys are welcome to. So that means Jay Clayton, SEC chair at the time, is going to back Glenn Hutchins. You guys are welcome to talk about Ripple if you want, Glenn. And financial inclusion. No. So I'd think about it that way. Okay. No, I think, and, and to be clear, I'll give, you, I'll give my usual disclaimer um, that my views are my own. And I'll also say I'm not going to pass views on any particular company. You guys are welcome to. I'm not going to pass views on any particular company. You guys are welcome to. I'll also say I'm not going to pass views on any particular company. You guys are welcome to. Don't let Jay Clayton fool you. He's a businessman. He made the decision to stand up. Jay Clayton is all about business. And I'm going to show you guys what I mean. Let's look at his resume. Here he is, Jay Clayton, right here. Jay Clayton, attorney, early life, grew up in Pennsylvania. Uh, we speed this up. Clayton joined Sullivan and Cromwell. Sullivan and Cromwell is responsible right now for handling the FTX bankruptcy proceeding, who SBF said he was basically forced to pick Sullivan and Cromwell, which that's kind of interesting. At the time of, and it's kind of interesting that Sullivan and Cromwell is behind the old, not behind FTX, but they're kind of like handling it. And they're charging big money, what, $200 million so far for their services. Sullivan and Cromwell full-time in 1995. At Sullivan and Cromwell, Clayton was a member of the firm's management committee, co-managing the firm's general practice. He specializes in mergers and acquisitions in capital markets. He represented prominent Wall Street firms, including Goldman Sachs. He served as an advisor to numerous companies, including the Federal Reserve the Department of Justice, but this is where it gets interesting. He also helped multiple corporations raise money through IPOs. So I was kind of curious, some companies that he helped raise money, could I connect any of them companies to Ripple or crypto? So I basically started Googling each one of these companies, and Oach Ziff Capital Management, really interesting. I got, I'm going to show you guys there. And Oak Tree Capital, who I tied directly to Ripple, I'm going to show you guys. And by there, I'm going to look up Black Hawk Network, Moles. I looked up Moles, um, and I just kind of want to get this video up. So just remember some of these names. We got Oats, Ziff Capital, and Oak Tree Management. So which one we got first? Okay, so Kim Morales. So Kim Morales, this must be in here too. Oh, I accidentally hit Lehman Brothers. Excuse me. So if I go back to Jay, and we're going to go to... Um. Okay, Morales and Company right here, Black Hawk Network and Moles Company. So Moles Company right there. So this is gonna be Ken Moles, who's one of the co-founders. And Ken Moles Investment Bank creates focus group on blockchain. So Ken Moles, who was also worked with Jay Clayton through an IPO, is an investment bank that creates group to focus on blockchain deals. Oh, it's also in New York. The New York Bank, <laughs> founded in 2007, is looking at crypto deals with more intent. I bet they are. Jay Clayton, Ripple Lawsuit, Crypto Clarity. Let's get this legal. 
Investment bank Molas Co. has started a group to focus on venture deals in the blockchain digital asset industry, according to the press release. The bank is led by billionaire Ken Molas, who in his speech last year likened the crypto space like the 1848 gold rush. He remains undisturbed by the market downturn that sent Bitcoin down. He says any disruptive technology is going to have volatility. It also worked with Ripple Labs and CypherTrace, a blockchain analytic company that was acquired by MasterCard in September. Hmm, I'm actually going to look down that rabbit hole a little bit more now that I read Reddit because Ripple Labs and CypherTrace, is there some kind of deal with CypherTrace and Ripple Labs? And also, we know there's been some of MasterCard announcements lately. Ken Moles has personal exposure in the crypto space after becoming an investor in Paxis in December 19, 20, uh, December 2020. I'm actually glad I went back and read this slower because I actually went so deep down this rabbit hole. I hope you guys got time. Because when I seen Paxis, I was like, whoa, no, Paxis is a pretty big deal. So Ken Moles is an investor in Paxis. No, Ken Moles is backed by Jay Clayton. So let's go down the rabbit hole and see what I pulled up here. Now, on this one is Moles, co-founder to head new blockchain advisory unit. Moles, and this is from last year, 2022. Moles and co. John Mutzi started the firm, was unfazed in launching a group aimed at crypto bear market, mm -hmm. aimed at a crypto bear market, acknowledging any new disruptive tech comes with volatility. Guys, I'm here to tell you, I hope you guys are getting ready before April. New York-based investment bank Molesco has launched a global blockchain group that will provide advisory services to blockchain and crypto firms. The group is being fronted by Moles & Co. co-founder John M. and supported by a team of senior bankers that have significant experience in advising blockchain companies according to the firm. So that was pretty interesting there. And I've I got a lot of clips to go through here, so I want to get through these. PayPal crypto partner Paxis. So basically, Paxis is also a partner with PayPal. So Paxis is a pretty big deal. Now, I kind of remember a lot of things about Paxis and doing research over them over the years. And it's kind of interesting that this billionaire is back in Paxis. Because I remember Paxis having issues with the SEC. Now, crypto firm Paxis to face SEC charges. But only ordered to stop minting Binance stablecoin BUSD. New York State regulators order Paxis to stop minting Binance BUSD tokens. CZ said on Twitter, the Ethereum-built BUSD token are backed by $16 billion worth of Treasury and a Treasury Reserve repurchase agreement. The regulator said it issued the order Monday as a result of several unresolved issues related to Paxis and its relationship with Binance. So are they getting that Binance through Paxis, it seems like? Cryptocurrency firm Paxis will cease issuing the new Binance BUSD stablecoin under the direction of New York State financial regulator Binance founder CZ said on Monday. Now listen to this. Paxis' own stablecoin was not implicated. But the company did confirm it had been notified by the Security SEC Commission to potential changes in connection with this BUSD product. <laughs> so basically, like, okay, hold on. We like your Paxis dollar. But that CZ token, that got to go. Come on, guys. Is this not a play by the man? And this is kind of like what this whole video is about, just showing you some of the connections with the elites building up to this big moment in the evolution of money. Okay, so Sculptor Capital. This must be, this is, all these companies we're going to look at real quick is all connections to J. Clayton IPOs. Sculptor Capital, is this one's, this one's Oach Ziff Capital Management, is an American global diversified alternative asset management firm. They are the largest institutional alternative asset manager in the world. The firm operates multiple investment strategies, including multi-strategy credit in real estate. It nearly has 400 employees worldwide, offices in New York, London, Hong Kong. Now, on this one, In September 2016, the firm entered into a settlement agreement with the U.S. SEC 
ending a five year into the violations of corrupt practices. Now this is kind of interesting because they had a four hundred million dollar fine. Now they paid two million dollar fine, but they made four hundred million dollars. So now on this one, this one goes a little bit more political. Michael Cohen, head of the European operations at Ouch Ziff Capital Management. Now basically they had a big deal with this company with the CEO or the top guy, Michael Cohen, former Ouch executive, who kind of got in trouble a little bit. Then they had a rebrand to Sculptor Capital, which is really Ouch Ziff Capital. Which, if you go back to Jay Clayton right here, it's Alt Ziff Capital Management, who connects to Jay Clayton. So, you kind of see what's going on here down this rabbit hole. Now, back to Oak Tree Capital. This is a really big connection. I'll try to speed this video up. Oak Tree Capital founder, digital currencies are a scheme. So, I'm like, whoa, hold up. This is trying to manipulate the prices here. Now, this is. Oak Tree Capital. You go back to Jay Clayton right here. Here's Oak Tree Capital Management right here. It just turned orange. You go back to Oak Tree Capital here. Digital currencies have seen a lot of optimism from traditional players in the financial sector. The latest of voices hate on Bitcoin is Howard Marks, the co-founder of Oak Tree Capital Management. So I'm like, okay. So first they're going to create FUD because they're all working together. And then sometime, of course, their tune will change. Billionaire investor Howard Marks warming to Bitcoin. I just thought he didn't like Bitcoin. Billionaire investor Howard Marks warming to Bitcoin. Marks, who is worth $2.1 billion, said his early comments on Bitcoin were a knee-jerk reaction. Um, <laughs> why the change of opinion? These guys are playing the market. I, I found an amazing read I'm about to show you guys on Marks. You're going to love this. And I'm telling you, I'll link it in the description. You might want to read it. Howard Marks, co-founder of Alternative Investment Manager Oak Tree Capital, says he reconsidered his previous dismissive stance on Bitcoin. The investor, who is now worth $2 billion, memo that cryptocurrency was a fad. The comment was a knee-jerk reaction without information. Marks conceded in a video interview. That's pretty interesting. I'm going to have to track that down. But... I did want to look a little bit more into Marx and seeing how I can connect him to crypto now. And I was quite blown away by what I found. Now, the next article I'm going to go to, my computer is slowing down because I've been pulling up these articles for hours here. Now, it's basically going to go to TQ Ventures. Howard Marx writes memos to Oak Tree Capital members, employees, investors. And he says a memo to his investors that basically his son moved in with him for a few months and his son had an opportunity to teach him about technology. Now, he's an old school investor. I want to pull this up so bad. My, like, it's, it's completely froze up here, but I can talk. Uh, his son moved in and he's like said he's from the 50s and 60s and he even actually wrote it down. And his time investing was called 50 50. Like basically, they were saying like there was 50 companies that were just so big and the opportunities were so huge before 1978 that he crushed it made a lot of money and then he said basically he was never into tech or technology because that wasn't really his era he said his parents were born in in like i don't know like the early 1900s i believe he said so he said he was never had exposure to technology but he said his son is nothing but a tech investor so behind that and this is it right here tg that it actually went to it now because i kind of want to show you it's an amazing read and like I said, I will speed this video up. We got about two or three more little clips left here. And as I'm trying to get to it, also, so basically.